We are at the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the Tomb of Jesus. When you come here, you can walk down into the place where Jesus was laid. But we know something greater has happened. Alleluia! Jesus has risen. We've heard a lot about rocks and stones. They roll the stone away from the Holy Sepulchre. At Bethlehem, we knelt down in the cave to touch the place where Jesus was born. At Tabka, there was the rock under the altar. This is where Jesus performed the miracle of the loaves and fishes. Jesus spoke to the crowds, to the multitudes sitting on the rocks. In the cave where the church of Paternoster is, Jesus taught his disciples to pray the Our Father. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Peter, which also means rock, his name was changed from Simon. In the rock at the Basilica of the Agony, we comforted Jesus. Cast the net to the right side of the boat. On the shore of the Sea of Galilee, Jesus called to the men, to the disciples out in the sea, to cast the net to the right side, and they caught more fish than they could hardly bring in. He then prepared breakfast for them on this rock at the Mensa Christi, the table of Christ. And afterwards, on this shore, he asked Peter three times, do you love me? An atonement for Peter's three denials. The second glorious mystery, the ascension. Fruit of the mystery is hope. The ascension of Jesus, Luke 24, 50 to 52. Then he led them out as far as Bethany and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, blessing God.
Now we are near the site of the ascension. You can see the outline of what could be the side and end point of a cross up above us. We are at the site of the Church of the Pater Noster, and there is a Byzantine ruins and church built there in the shape of a cross to mark the site of the ascension. When we go back to think about the fruit of this mystery, hope, how do we have hope? One way is through the Fatima Decade Prayer given to us by Our Lady of Fatima in 1917. She asks that we pray it every time we pray the rosary at the end of every decade. Let's pray it together now. Oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Amen. The third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit. Fruit of the mystery is love of God. This comes from Acts 2, 1 to 4. The coming of the Spirit, when the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. In the bottom left, you can see we are back in the upper room. This is where the disciples were with Mary, where they gathered and received the tongues of fire from the Holy Spirit. The other picture is a painting in the ceiling at the Church of the Dormition, and it shows us salvation history. On the far left, the first image, you can see the angel sending Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden. Then we see the birth of Jesus. The crucifixion with Mary and John at the foot of the cross. And Jesus gives us his mother at this time. Above that, he is ascending into heaven. And then there, to the right of the ascension, is the Holy Spirit coming upon them with tongues as of fire. And finally, the coronation of Mary, assumption and coronation of Mary as queen of heaven and earth. Love of God, this is how much God loves us. And how much, when we think about it, we must love him in return, that he has come to earth as a little babe, he has suffered and died, he has risen from the dead and given us his mother to walk with us here on earth, even to this day and throughout all time. We have walked with Mary now from the greeting of the angel telling her the good news that she would be the mother of the Son of God, Jesus. And we've walked past the cross where she has held the body of her dead son, Jesus, in her arms. And now it is almost time for Mary to follow Jesus to heaven. The fourth glorious mystery, the Assumption of Mary, fruit of the mystery is grace of a happy death. Tradition has it that after Mary died, she was buried. The apostles had all come to be with her except for one. Probably St. Thomas arrived late. When Thomas arrived, he asked to be able to see Mary's earthly body in the tomb. When it was reopened, they found their body was not there. And in this beautiful icon, we see Jesus holding the wrapped Mary in his arms, taking her to heaven. I put this in because I mentioned God incidences at the beginning, and this is one of the ones that took place probably last week. I was um, preparing the, some of the slides and I was on Facebook and this popped up and it's a memory from a couple of years ago and someone trying to have something else but the daily news and things on Facebook and they wanted you to, to post um, an artist's work and I was given Raphael by my sister. Um, so I found this piece and isn't it ironic? It is the Assumption of Mary, the Empty Tomb, and Jesus crowning her 
as Queen of Heaven and Earth. This is one of my favorite images of Mary. The fifth glorious mystery, the coronation of Mary as Queen of Heaven and Earth. And her mantle is spread over each and every one of us. And I hope that today, as you've walked with Mary to Jesus, that you have felt her mantle spread it out, spread out over you. And that you know that you can always call on her that she is always there for you. Mary is your mother. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, Espes Nostra Salve, A Te Clamamus, Exules Filii Eve, A Te Suspiramus, Gementes et lentes, in hac lacrimarum vale. Ea ergo, advocata nostra, idos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Et Iesum, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis, Post hoc exilium ostende, O clemens, O pia, O, 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 o dulcis Virgo Maria. here that Dennis and Angelina keep mentioning is the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary. And I remember when they first started talking to me about it, I, you know, so yeah, in fact, I actually enrolled in that about 20 years ago. I just came across it at the time and it was the U.S. I told we enrolled through the U.S., sent in the letter. And it's a very simple promise. All you're promising is to pray one full rosary a week, you know, so just three or four rosaries a week. And then all of the promises that are attached to that. But the reason that Dennis and Angelina are promoting this is that it plays a pivotal role in why how God raised up this little tiny church to be a national shrine. This is what Father Luke de Sale understood is that it was the enrollment in the confraternity got 3,000 parishioners to enroll. And, and so the question is, okay, so why is the confraternity of the Holy Rosary so powerful? And I mean, if we're already praying our rosaries anyways, what does it mean to enroll in a spiritual association? There's no meetings. There's no, there's no, uh, it's, why, why do that? And it's because of the ecclesial dimension of what it means to belong to a confraternity. You see, in our church, the public official prayer of our church is the divine liturgy that we have in the, in the sacraments and in the divine office. And then outside of the public official prayer of the church, you have all these devotions in our church. And there's no doubt that the most holy rosary is the most indulgence recognized devotion in the church promoted by popes and saints you know throughout the ages but then on top of that promotion of a devotion which and devotion often means it's the personal devotion that we pray that we enter into you don't have to do it but you're strongly encouraged to do it and there's 
tremendous graces. When you enroll in the confraternity, you're taking that personal devotion that you have to Our Lady, and you are uniting it now with an ecclesial recognition. <coughs> confraternity is recognized by the church. You could say it's the highest recognition the church can give to a devotion. And it's the highest way of participating in the graces of that devotion. When you enroll in the confraternity, as they've been telling us, you share in the graces of all the other members and their rosaries and their offerings. So even though the act is so simple, you just have to sign on the dotted line <laughs> and enroll and promise, not even under pain of sin. You don't have to worry if you fail to pray a full rosary one week. It doesn't mean you, you're dropped out, you're fired, you know. But it means you share in, again, the promises themselves are wonderful, but it's because you are, it is, you are uniting with the church. It's a, a, an official level, you see, it's the most official level the church can grant to the devotion. Again, these are just kind of intuitions or insights I was getting because, again, I, initially, I didn't quite get it, too, you know. Dennis and Angela talked about the show, and the confraternity, confraternity, I'm kind of going, why, why are you getting so excited about the confraternity? I, I don't get it. You see? And I guess it's part of the secret. So, so, if you, if you get it, so that's the thing. So, I... There better not be anyone here now, this weekend, who hasn't been rolled in the cover yet, right? Actually, you're never forced, it's all in your But that's the reason, it's, to, it's, it's an international confraternity with ecclesial recognition. So it brings an ecclesial dimension, it unites us as Catholics. See, our faith is not just private and personal, it's meant to be corporate and ecclesial. That's what enrollment in the confraternity will obtain for us. That's what I understood finally, and I hope you're getting it too. <laughs> it's amazing if you think about this priest, Father Luke de Sadat, a humble priest with basically a parish that was deader than a doornail, and he goes in and he finds his pig chewing on the rosary. That's like our world today. It's like the world is chewing on a rosary, like, like the swine. And what did he do? He made one little vow that Father Roger just so eloquently said. He said, just start enrolling in the confraternity. And that's what transformed that place to, in 1954, a million pilgrims went in pilgrimage. And now, what is happening in this day is Our Lady is recreating and resurrecting this movement. And we are all being written into this story in our day.
So what do you do now? Join Mary's Army. Enlist now. All you have to do is pray one each of the joyful, luminous, sorrowful, and glorious rosaries a week. Your prayers can be as powerful as Niagara Falls after you join the confraternity because every member of the confraternity, their prayers all go out together for all the petitions and intentions that we have. It's very powerful and it's a great way to easily multiply your prayers. At Fatima, Our Lady said to pray the rosary daily. She also asked us to make five first Saturdays this isn't impossible, and more and more with the use of good technology, it's easy to be done by just getting on with a group of other people praying the rosary. So even though you can't be with people perhaps at this time, you can pray with them. God bless you, and join the Army now. And we would like to thank the writings of Catherine Doherty and Father Donald Carlin from Madonna House, Bishop Robert Barron, The Word on Fire, The Gospels, Jeff Cavins and Raymond Arroyo, EWTN, The Path of the Messiah, The Central New York Marian Center, The Marian Devotional Movement, RosaryBridge.com, for our music, Holy Redeemer Church, David Parks, and Father Matt Rawson and Seminarian James Butner from the Diocese of Syracuse. And for those who've seen them, our holy masks, we have been provided those by Etsy.com. If you're interested in purchasing some from Etsy.com, they take all monies and give them as donations to different organizations. And you can see the sites once you get on Etsy.com. You can go to Face Covers of Faith Fun or Zippy's Treasures for Children. God bless. Thank you for watching and praying with Follow Her, Beloved of the Trinity. And join us anytime. We are available by phone, teleprayer, website, YouTube, and Facebook. We hope you can join us. We'll be live streaming once the Pilgrim Rosary returns home to Syracuse in mid-March. And we'd like to thank one of our sponsors at Etsy.com, Face Covers of Faith Fun, and Zippy's Treasures. And we invite you to check them out because they have some marvelous holy masks that we think you'll enjoy.